I'm here today at the Pharmaceutical Sciences World Congress in Stockholm, Sweden. With me is Dr. Mary Relling. She has been talking about the implementation of clinical pharmacogenetics. Dr. Relling, what does the application of clinical pharmacogenetics currently look like in practice? The application of pharmacogenetics in clinical practice is still rare. Um, most prescribing of medications in the U.S. and elsewhere is done without using genetic tests. Okay, um, and you're part of the Clinical Pharmacogenetics Implementation Consortium. What does it do? Uh, the Clinical Pharmacogenetics Implementation Consortium, or CPIC, uh, is working to try to facilitate the clinical implementation of pharmacogenetic testing. It was started by myself at St. Jude and Dr. Klein at Stanford in 2009 as a joint project between the Pharmacogenomics Research Network and PharmGKB. And our goal is to write very specific um, clinical guidelines for prescribing for specific gene drug pairs that are peer-reviewed, freely available, and updatable. Um, one of the consortium's goals, as you just mentioned, is to facilitate appropriate use of clinical pharmacogenetics. What are the potential problems? Yes, we, we do want to facilitate the appropriate use, and the potential problems would include simply not understanding how to move from genetic testing to specific prescribing recommendations. So CPIC provides the tools that implementers need to move from the genetic test result to very specific prescribing information. You're also chair of the Pharmaceutical Sciences Department at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. What does your work focus there involve? Our work in the pharmaceutical department, our, our mission is to elucidate the basis for inter-individual differences in response to medications, then to translate that knowledge into patient care as soon as possible, and to provide the best possible pharmaceutical care for our patients. We provide comprehensive pharmaceutical care providing all medications for our patients no matter where they live and no matter how long they're treated for their disease. Um, precision medicine is a big part of system therapeutics. To what extent can it be applied to treating leukemia? Precision medicine has a big role in treating leukemia because leukemia has a long history of um, using genetic testing to define different subtypes of leukemia based on the somatically acquired genomic variants. And as well, we're always interrogating the germline genetic variability in our patients. And the majority of patients with leukemia are treated on research protocols, and so that allows us to capture not only the genetic variation that contributes to interpatient variability, but also information on their renal function, their liver function, their age, their nutritional status. And we use all of that information to put together a package of therapy that we hope will result in the best likelihood of cure of their leukemia while minimizing adverse effects. Thank you, Dr. Relling, for your time. This is Jennifer Rahman reporting for FIP.